Hello everybody, this is Graham Manson and today I'm going to be looking at Athenium Mystic Library. Now I don't know about you, but when I was in school I spent an awful lot of time in my local library, probably studying for exams I didn't study for before. Well in this game you're going to be a bunch of magic students who have rushed to the library for some last minute studying. But for this privilege, since it is technically after hours, the librarian says you have to shovel the books in their proper spots. Now the main mechanism of this game is basic card drafting. But with each card you draft, you are going to be getting a benefit, but also giving the players to your left and right a benefit as well. And of course you're going to be trying to get the books onto your shelves in particular patterns to score objective points. So will this end up being a well used reference book? or just a long forgotten tome. Let's get it to the table, see how it's played, and we'll come back for my final thoughts on Athenium Mystic Library. Here is Athenium set up for three players. All the library books are placed into their holder, and the side shelves and the spiders are placed to one side. All bonus tokens are placed in the bag, and the objective cards are shuffled and four are drawn face up. Each player will take a main shelf and place one spider in each compartment. They take two wands of their color, and all their other wands go back onto the main game board, along with their player piece which is placed on zero on the score track. The study cards are split into an A and B and shuffled. Now the goal of the game, of course, is to clean up the library. You'll score points for completing objectives during the game, which will require books in specific configurations on your shelf. At the end of the game, you'll score points for shelves that are completely full, decorative candles placed around your shelves, and for shelving your favorite subject of books. The game is split into an A phase and a B phase, and each phase has five turns. At the start of each phase, deal out six cards from that phase's deck to each player. Each person will then select a card from their hand, play it face down, and pass their cards to the player on their left during phase A, and the person on their right during phase B. In the fifth turn of the phase, you'll have two cards, play one face down, and discard the other. When all players have played their card and passed, reveal the cards and each person will resolve the card in front of them. Let's have a quick look at these cards. The bottom section of each card will be a benefit that you receive. The green section will be the benefit the person to your left receives, and the blue section's benefit will go to the person on your right. The benefits are pretty straightforward. Collect a book of that color from the supply. Take any book of the supply, but it must be placed in this area on your shelf. Remove the number of books from one shelf and reshelf them and any other shelf. Take a side shelf, and each player can only have a maximum of two of these. Take one of your magic wands from the game board into your supply. Draw a bonus tile, or just score points. And you do not have to take all the benefits you receive from anybody's cards, and you can collect them all in front of you before you decide what to do with them. If you get a book bonus and you want to place that book on a shelf, it must be supported at a minimum on one side by either a wall or another book and each book must be supported from below by either a shelf or another book. If you're reshelving books, you cannot remove a book from a shelf if it would cause any other books in that compartment to violate those support rules. Anytime you receive a bonus tile from the bag, draw it and you can either take the action on the tile or add it candle side up to your shelf in an empty space to score points at the end of the game. If at any point during the game you are able to completely fill a compartment that still has a spider token in it, remove the spider token and it has to be used before the next round. It can be turned into a magic wand, a bonus token from the bag, a book of any color, or another side shelf. Once each person has placed their benefits, any leftover benefits are returned to the supply and each player will get a chance to score any of the objectives. Each player can only score each objective once per game. The objective cards will show you a specific configuration of books to achieve the reward located on the top of the card. To score an objective, you must place one of your magic wands from in front of you, not the supply, onto the objective and receive the number of points and any benefits. Once each player has had the option to score any cards, go through the cleanup step, which is to remove the rightmost objective card and returning any wands to it to the general supply, not back to the players. Shift all the other cards down to fill the space, then draw a new card for the front of the objective line. All study cards are discarded, and then you start the next round. After five turns, the phase is over. If this was the end of phase A, you deal out six cards to each player from the phase B deck. If this was the end of phase B, you go to final scoring. During final scoring, you're going to score points for each book you have on your shelf that matches your favorite subject, as shown on your shelf. For each completely filled compartment, you'll score points as shown beside the shelf. Each candle will be worth points printed on the candle space below it, and you'll get one point for each wand you have left in your personal supply. And the player with the most points is the winner. Let's get back to see what I thought about Athenium 
Mystic Library. On to theme and components. The theme is nice, but the game itself is not overly thematic. Yes, you are shelving books, but they're kind of haphazard on where you put them on the shelves, and the drafting is not thematic. But ultimately, I did like the theme. It was something a little different, and that is always welcome. So what about the components? They were, by and far, good. And I have to call out the books. Now, I'm only kind of showing two containers here, but there's five in total. Every single one of these books has a different title on it. I really like that little touch. It did make it entertaining when you're placing the books on the shelves. The book containers themselves need to be assembled, but that's easy, and they're nice that they're going to be stored in the box fully assembled. The cards are fine. You know, maybe a player aid for the symbols would have been nice. And all the wands and player pieces, they're also uh, all different as well. So, you know, all the pink wands are different from all the blue wands. Overall, I was pleased with the look of this game. So let's talk about the gameplay. The basics of the game are nice and simple. Draft a card, action the card. It has a lot of enjoyable decision points in the game. You know, you're looking at your hand of cards, trying to figure out what the best card for you is like, and the constant pressure of those moving objectives really puts some pressure on you. You've got just four rounds before the leftmost card is gone. It's an objective, objective card. And that adds kind of another wrinkle to kind of picking that card of what's the best one for you at that point. And I did like that the phases felt slightly different than the cards. You know, the phase A cards were more about getting books. Well, the phase B cards were more about maybe moving or manipulating the books. And there's definitely some crossover between the two decks, so it's kind of not all, you know, all phase is, uh, phase A is getting books and all phase B is manipulating them, but there's some crossover. I think the other main mechanism of the game, if you can call it that, will ultimately decide whether this game is for you or not. There's a definite puzzle aspect to this game with some randomness. At the beginning of the game, you're going to be putting books wherever they fit, basically do the play placement rules. And sometimes an objective card comes out that just kind of fits your books perfectly and it's easy to get points. You didn't do anything, you just kind of got lucky. Later on in the game though, this starts to slow down as players are trying to seal the options each round. Now I enjoyed doing that mental puzzle. And it's not overly difficult, but it's going to lead to some downtime. Now I will say that I think the best player count is three, as every card you play kind of affects everyone else in the game. But with that being said, this is very solitary. <laughs> I found it very hard to hate draft in this game. I'm, I'm so focused on getting what I want because of the pressure of those objective cards that I'm really not looking at the other players' boards. But the only thing I intended to look at were maybe the wands, because I like that currency. You know, I might pass a card with a wand on the upper half, hoping you're going to play that card so I can get a wand in return. I did find that wand currency in, uh, enjoyable for the most part, but, you know, sometimes frustrating as well. If you spend all your wands in Phase A, and there are very, very few cards in Phase B that allow you to get wands, then you're kind of looking to get wands through candles or spiders, and hopefully you can get a wand before the objective is gone. But, would I recommend this game? Yes, I would. It offers some really good thinky puzzle aspects with some nice, simple gameplay. I like the lighthearted theme that kind of meshed well with the components. I enjoyed that the game was relatively easy to learn and to teach, and the actions people were doing were very straightforward. And I really enjoyed trying to fit the books into the proper spaces before the objective was gone, with some added pressure of making sure I had a wand to use for the scoring. But this comes with a negative. With that thinkiness comes with some downtime, especially later on in the game, kind of waiting player to figure out their own puzzles. Because you can't have a wasted round, so you need to be maximizing every single move. I also wish that there was kind of more player interaction as it does feel like multiplayer solitaire. For me, I felt choosing the card that was benefited most for me was far more important than what I was giving or not giving the other players. And I'd like there to be, I don't know, something more in that decision. And the randomness of coming of the cards coming out can put a little damper on things. When a high point card comes out and you see that it's going to be impossible for you to achieve, but an opponent, basically through sheer luck, has it almost done, is a bit disheartening. But overall, I'm going to give this game a 7.5 out of 10, and the Dice Tower seal of approval. This game works in so many situations because it's easy to learn, but still gives all players good opportunities for some good, meaningful decisions to be made. And that's it for the moment. Until next time, thanks for watching.